This is my car, and this is my plane. What do they have in common? Well, I've always referred to my car as a computer on wheels. I'm going to show you what I mean. Then, we're going to compare the airplane to see how similar it is. Maybe it's even a computer with wings. Now, any self-respecting computer gives you the ability to customize it. Now, whether you're setting up a color scheme or enabling different options, making changes to how the computer interacts with you is fundamental. My car has a menu screen controlling many aspects of how it drives. To keep things current and to add new functionality, my car gets over-the-air software updates. In operation, my car uses artificial intelligence to drive autonomously. It recognizes the double yellow line, oncoming traffic, side roads, and it can maintain its position in its lane. If it comes up behind a slower car on the road, it waits until the coast is clear and it automatically passes the slower car. Here, for example, as the car approaches a traffic circle, it signals a turn, slows down to allow another car to pass through, and then it executes the turn and accelerates. And all of this is done hands-off. At all times, the car is aware of other cars in the vicinity. The chart on this screen shows how the car constantly monitors its energy usage to predict remaining energy available at the end of the trip. It recognizes the current wind conditions and its effects on its range. Maybe you can begin to draw parallels to see how electronic oversight of my drive to the airport matches up with the capabilities inside the plane itself. Here's uh, one final example of how the car negotiates a turn, hands off the steering wheel. If you live in a flat part of the country, you might appreciate the view of the foothills ahead as I continue my drive to the airport. And even though it's not a function of driving, why not have a TV, Netflix, and YouTube in your car? Well, I take my wife shopping, and while she's in the store, I'm in the parking lot watching a show. So now, arriving at the airport, I pull the plane out of the hangar and I do the pre-flight inspection. The computer magic starts as soon as I turn on the master switch. You define your airplane to the computer through a menu screen that comes up by holding down the menu button as the screen boots up. There's a ton of options and instructions to the G3X so it knows what the various inputs mean. You can also tell it the desired range of values and when to trigger alerts. Just like the car does, the airplane gets software updates. Some updates are done to keep the mapping database current. From time to time, other updates are available to add functionality to the computer's operating system. Both updates are done by downloading data to an SD card, which is then inserted into the G3X panel. Customization of the screen presentation is done through menus on the G3X. Just like in the car, you can configure the screen to suit your preference. If you prefer the tapes, style of airspeed, and altitude display, you can set the screen up like this. My own personal preference is to have the digital representation of traditional steam gauges in a six-pack formation, like this. You can go further by adding ancillary displays in the form of inserts. Now I've chosen to keep this insert of an ADS-B traffic ring. Because it's behind the scenes, so to speak, you might not think of the Attitude Heading Reference System, or AHARS, as a computer. But it is a solid-state replacement for mechanical spinning gyroscopes, among other things. Once the AHARS is aligned and the setup tasks are complete, it's time to go fly. To demonstrate the airplane's computer in operation, let's make a short flight. Let's do these three legs and go from Jasper, Georgia to Cleveland, Tennessee. And just like computers allowed the car to drive all by itself, we're going to let the airplane's autopilot fly the plane. Shortly after takeoff, I engaged the autopilot, which then began the task of flying the plane hands-off to the predetermined destination. The plane flew the desired course and leveled off at the proper altitude. Even though it was a pretty bumpy ride down low, the plane's computer kept us right on path and at altitude just fine. Looking over the nose, I can see our first waypoint come into view. 
Then, right on cue, the airplane makes a turn to join the next leg of the trip. Key in the automation in my plane is the integration of GPS with the moving map display. Where I am, where I'm headed, when I'll get there are all computerized and digitally displayed. I can see the navigation data in a chart format, or I can look at the course superimposed over a sectional. I can visualize my entire flight plan route and see where I am along the way. It takes computers to do that. Remember that my car kept track of energy available and distance I could travel before I had to recharge? Well, the plane does that too. Anytime, I can look and see the endurance and the distance I can fly if power and winds remain the same. Arriving at the second waypoint, the plane initiates a turn to follow the prescribed course. So far in this flight, other than managing the power, I've made no control input since shortly after takeoff. I can enjoy the view while the landscape passes below. The computer tells me when it's time to descend to pattern altitude, and it signals me again with a tone when I'm within 200 feet of my target altitude. At this point, I take over and just manually fly the plane to the ground, parking next to this Cirrus on the ramp. Automation in my little RV-12 makes cross-country flight a real pleasure. Now you can choose to hand fly the plane, or you can let George do it. Whether you choose to use all the functions or not, clearly this plane is nothing less than a computer with wings.